Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm bringing you a sculpting uh, time lapse. And I know you guys have been asking for more sculpting videos, so stay tuned and I'll fill you in. So I'm starting off with a uh, aluminium foil uh, core, so I don't use as much clay and it gives it some kind of form to start off with. And for this I'm using monster clay, it's a wax based clay so it doesn't go hard. It's mainly used for you know, you know moulding and casting things and then reusing the clay so it's, it's really cost effective. So with monster clay you heat it up in the microwave for about two to three minutes and it becomes quite soft and you can sculpt bigger things quite quickly. So I'm just roughing out a basic shape for the top of the head to start off with and I've just put roughly where the eyes are going to go and I'll just be building on this um, foil form. So I've recently started sculpting a new dragon doll and I wanted to do something uh, a little different and a little bigger and more elaborate. Uh, so I'm doing a new dragon sculpt and it's heavily inspired by Game of Thrones dragons. It's not exactly the same, I wanted to put my spin on it a little bit more so there are slight differences between the two dragons. So this sculpt has four parts to it. Uh, it has two interchangeable jaws, one open mouth and one closed mouth, uh, the top part of the head and the tongue. So I'll be casting those in four different parts as well and I'll be taking you through the lower part of the jaw uh, in another video. So this video is primarily the top part. So here I'm just popping in um, some glass capuchons uh, for placeholders for the eyeballs. I used a marble to make a dint in it, I don't know why, but it was there so I used it. Okay, so I'm just building up the nostril area a little bit more. So I'm just using this little upholstery pick to uh, rough out the nostril area. Uh, my needle tool broke and I needed to fix it so this is all I have at the moment. So, Note to self, you can use any tool to sculpt anything. So as this doll is the largest doll I've made, I had to make a few changes to any armatures and moulding techniques that I know. Um, so I did a lot of research and I come up with the uh, ball and socket armature that I'm going to use for this uh, in a larger size so it can hold the weight. And I'll be doing a different moulding and casting method for this little critter. So I have this habit of using my nails as a rake tool, like some kind of savage. Uh, I don't know why, I just prefer it than over a tool. Um, but I end up paying for it in the end because my skin pulls back from my nail and it's not very fun. So I'm just building the shape around the mouth a bit more. Uh, 
Now I'm just going to go in and make some form around the eyeballs with some eyelids. Uh, this is a pretty simple technique that I do, which is rolling out a flat sort of worm and working it into something that you've already sculpted. So I'm just going to rough in uh, the gum line uh, where the teeth are going to go. Uh, this is an open mouth so it needs some gums and with the closed mouth I'm going to have um, the front teeth showing. So I'm going to start building on the other brow line. Um, I know dragons have quite a pronounced brow line, so uh, again, just rolling out a, a thicker worm and just working it into the clay.
they just got a little bit difficult at some times uh, using the Game of Thrones dragons as a reference point because the dragons all have um, physical differences and I only noticed that until now they're not all the same. So Drogon has a different type of chin than what Viserion and Rhaegal have. Um, so the closed mouth is more like um, Rhaegal and open mouth is more like Drogon. So here I've added the lowered part of the open mouth. So I sculpted this initially as one part just so I could get the um, dimensions right on it. Uh, and then I ended up cutting it in half and sculpting a uh, sort of a click joint that um, it sits into nicely. I'm just roughing out the little, um, I don't know what you call it, gummy attachment on the side of the mouth of the dragon. So I'll end up um, adding some more flesh to the outside of that so it'll become more pronounced uh, a little later on. So I'm adding a few little horns to begin with. Um, I just do this just to rough it in a little bit first and see how everything's sitting. Um, once it's been cut in half, I'll then uh, refine everything and add more horns and stuff. So when I'm sculpting uh, the horns like this, uh, I usually get the clay while it's quite soft to um, establish a shape first and then uh, once I've uh, put it onto the face I let it cool down a little bit so it, it keeps its form. So as you can see here uh, I've decided to add a little bit more flesh to that uh, gummy area uh, which brought out the shape a bit more. So I'm just going to be adding some more horns for the next X amount of minutes. So I'll let that run through and I'll come back uh, to where something's different. Oh yeah, so if you're curious about this weird little tooth that I've done, uh, I put it there just to get an idea of 
uh, how I wanted to do the teeth and um, the size, etc. Um, it doesn't stay there, I end up cutting it off anyway and redoing the teeth. So I think one of the mistakes I've done here is um, I got a bit carried away and did little horn things on top of the brow line, which I probably should have done once the pieces were cut in half, um, so my hands didn't crush them, but I ended up fixing it anyway, so uh, all is good.
these little, um, I don't know what you call them, little runs of scales at top of the head uh, something that I've done that is a little bit different to the Game of Thrones dragons. Um, I did want to make it a bit different, so I changed this up a little bit. It's still very similar, but uh, not exactly the same. I don't know if you could probably see but um, I have roughed in where I'm going to cut it in half. Uh, it goes up above the uh, gum line thing and um, around the back of the head and it, it fits in really well. Uh, it's a kind of a seamless um, click in so I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out.
guys so that is where I'm going to leave it for this video um, I will try and finish it off in uh, the next video uh, where I show the lower jaw getting completed um, the closed mouth and the tongue and scales and everything else uh, at this point it's taking about 10 hours to do this bit um, and I have really enjoyed doing it so far it's it's the biggest and most elaborate thing I've done so far yeah, let me know in the comments who your favourite dragon is from Game of Thrones. Mine's definitely Drogon. How can it not be? It's definitely a mama's boy. <laughs> um, and if you want me to sculpt anything or make any dolls or anything like that, uh, leave it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll come back with the next video. Bye!